Hey guys, welcome back to our phase 365 concepts. In today's video, we are going to explore more features and settings of Microsoft Teams. We will see how to renew a team. We will learn the background process of team expiration. We will discuss what is a channel, how channels work, and we will learn how to create channels in Microsoft Teams application. So let's get started. As a global administrator or the owner of a team, if you have received a notification, that your team is going to expire or if you want to know if your team has an expiration date you can go to microsoft teams application click teams section and if you see a red icon next to the team name that means this team is going to expire in less than 30 days now you must be thinking that why a team has expiration date so the answer is every team is associated with a microsoft 365 group and as an administrator, you can set expiration date for these groups. And as per the expiration date, the group will be expired and the team that is associated with that group will also expire. Let's go to Microsoft Entra ID and let's see what we are talking about. In Microsoft Entra ID, go to groups and click expiration. Here you can see for two Microsoft 365 groups, I have set expiration date to 30 days. By default, no groups are added under this expiration policy. But as an administrator, you have an option to set expiration date for Microsoft 365 groups. So what happens in the background when a Microsoft 365 group is inactive for the duration that is specified here, that group and the team associated with that group get expired. That means the group is deleted. Also, the team associated with that group is deleted. And once a Microsoft 365 group is deleted, it is retained for 30 days in soft deleted groups. You have 30 days to restore it. And if you do not restore the group, after 30 days, the group and the content of the group will be purged. But let's say the users start using this Microsoft 365 group before its expiration date. So this group will be renewed automatically. So if you see a red icon next to the team or the owner of the team has received a notification of team expiration, that means the Microsoft 365 group that is associated with this team is going to expire. If you want to renew the team or you want to know the date when a team is going to expire, you'll go to Teams application, Go to teams section and next to the team click three dots click manage team and go to settings and scroll it down here you will see an option says team expiration expand this option and here you can see the date when this particular team team three is going to expire it says as per policy your team will now expire on 24th of may 2024 30 days before the team expiration date, the owner of the team will receive a notification and can renew the team from the notification email. Also, the owner of this team can renew the team from here. But as of now, we do not see renew option because the expiration date is more than 30 days. Next, we will talk about channels. A channel is a digital space that allows members and owners of the team to collaborate together. If we talk about the difference between a team and channel, a team is a collection of people and a channel is a space where you communicate with the members of a team, where you upload the files and you can access the applications to get your work done. When you create a team, it creates a channel with name general. You can create multiple channels under a single team. Basically, there are three types of channels you can create in a team, standard, shared and private. To create a channel in a team, next to the team name, you will click three dots and click add channel. Here, you will give a name to the channel. And then under choose a channel type, you can select if you want to create standard channel, shared channel or private channel. Standard channel is open for all the team members. All the team members can collaborate with each other in a standard channel. Whereas a private channel is used when you want to add particular team members. If you want to create a channel where you do not want all the team members to collaborate, you will create a private channel and will allow only few users in that channel. And the shared channel is used when we want to collaborate with the people inside and outside the organization. 
So let's create a standard channel and click create. So here you can see test channel is created under this test one team. Now let's create a private channel within the same team. Go to add channel and let's give it a name private channel and select private and click create. But this time it is asking to add members in this channel because this is a private channel. You cannot let every member of this team to communicate within this channel. Remember one thing, you can add only the members of this team in this channel. People outside of the team can't be added directly within the channel. If you want to add a user who is part of another team, you need to first add that user in this team as a member and then you can add him in this channel. For example, let me skip this option for now. So this channel is created and here we can see this lock icon that indicates this is a private channel. Now let's add few members in this channel. And first let me check what members we have under this channel. So we have concepts, we have external user and we have concepts user. So if I try to add a user in this channel, which is not part of this team, I should not be able to add him. Let's go to add members. Let's look for Bob Ross. It says we couldn't find any matches. But let's try concepts. Concepts is available because this user is already part of this team. So I can add this user from here. So let's go to channel settings. Let's go to manage channel and we can see concepts is added. Now let's try to add Bob Ross in this team first and then we will add Bob Ross in channel. So he is added in the team and let's go to channel add members. Now let's try to add Bob Ross and now we can add him. So that means if you are adding a user in a private channel which is not part of the team, you will not be able to add him. To add a user in a private channel, you need to add him first within the team then you can add that user within the private channel. But in case of a standard channel, you do not have to add members because standard channel is open for everyone. That means all the members and owners of the team can communicate in a standard channel. Now let's say I want to send a message in a channel. So I will click on the channel and then I'll click start a post. I will compose a message. and click post. Now everyone who has access to this channel or who is part of this channel can see this message. Another thing you should know about the messages in a channel is that if someone replies to your message, the original message will stay attached. Like you see in the emails, if someone replies to your email, you see the original email in the same thread. Same way when someone replies to your message in a channel, you can see the complete thread. Let me show you this practically. I have a user logged in to Teams in browser. This user is Bob Ross and this user is part of Team 2, Test 2 team. So let's go back to Team browser and let's go to Test 2 team general channel and here we can see this message. Now if Bob Ross replies to this message, click send and let's go back. So we have received the notification of the message here. And if we go to channel, we can see the reply from Bob Ross and we can see the complete email thread. So that is all for now. If you found this video informative, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel. And if you have questions or suggestions, feel free to write them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.